welcome back to our channel one more time. Today I'm going to film a story time video to tell you guys a little bit of my life and where I am now. I feel like it is so important to encourage other moms and let you guys know that you guys can get through it, that you guys are so strong, that you guys are wonderful mothers, even though you might feel like absolute crap. Um, just, I just want to encourage you, any mom out there has a really, or had a really fussy baby, uh, maybe you can relate to me, maybe you're going through this, but I just want you to know that it gets better. It, it really does get better. Um, Okay guys, so Aaliyah was born on April 11th, 2015, that's crazy, 2015, and she was a really good baby for like the first two days, um, and then she got really, really, really fussy, she was just really fussy. I was breastfeeding her and um, she was like she would cry throughout all the night she would keep me up and I was practically doing this all by myself AJ would work night shifts and then he would come home he would rest he wouldn't help me with the kids very much so I had a two a three-year-old and a um, newborn and it was just really really hard on me I remember I I'd just sit there some nights um, on my bed and cry because I didn't know what to do with such a fussy baby and what was worse is I was living with AJ's um, AJ's family. So whenever you're living with somebody else, you are you don't want to wake anybody up. You don't want to, like, you know, bother somebody else. So you do whatever you possibly can to shut that baby up. And so I remember the only thing that would quiet her was breastfeeding her. And I remember how hard breastfeeding was for me. Like, I love breastfeeding. I, I breastfed Anthony, and I knew I was going to breastfeed her because I could do it through Anthony. So, of course, like, it wasn't going to be a problem for me breastfeeding her. But every breastfeeding, like, hurts somehow, some way. It's hard. Um, and so... I, I would spend all night long with her, you know, breastfeeding and nursing, and it got to the point where I just, my nipples, my boobs could not take it anymore because she was just constantly on it, and I remember I would just sit there and cry because my boobs would hurt so much, but once I would, like, take the, the, um, my boob out of her mouth, once I would stop nursing, nursing her, she would start screaming and, and crying, and I felt so, so, like, frustrated. I remember the first few months of her life and um, I would I, I didn't like to go out. I just like to stay home because I felt like if I went out every time I would go out it was just constant crying constant crying constantly having to like worry about when we were gonna go home. I was a teen mom. I didn't have my own car. I didn't go anywhere by like on my own because I didn't know how to drive and so I had to rely on AJ's parents and AJ to drive me everywhere. I remember how stressful it was just to breastfeed her and then plus I was feeling a little like self like um like I just wasn't feeling myself very much at that point um, and I was just like at an all time low of my life whenever after I had Leah and while I was pregnant of Leah and so um and then I had a really bad three year old like he would cuss he would scream he would like um he was just bad he was a bad kid he wouldn't listen to me he would he would scream at me a three year old like just imagine a three year old doing that and so I remember I let this go on for a while and then I said I can't do this anymore like I cannot do this anymore like everything is just crashing down on me and it's emotional to me because I remember how like I felt at that point I felt like I felt like a failure, I felt like the worst mother in the world, I felt like the worst, you know, girlfriend and wife, I felt like the worst everything at that moment. I remember I like called my mom and I was like, mom, I can't do this anymore, like I cannot, I cannot do this anymore, I feel like I'm gonna give up. I was having suicidal thoughts, I was cutting myself, um, it was just like my all time low at that point and I remember I was so scared to call my mom because I knew how much of a failure, or I thought like if I call her, I'm I'm gonna have to tell her like how sorry I am, and I'm gonna look stupid, and I'm and I should have listened to her from the beginning, and so that's whenever I called my mom, and I was like, mom, I cannot do this, like I can't, like I need to go back, I can't do this, I can't deal with this baby. So my mom ended up helping me get a flight back to where she was. I was in Washington um, State, and she lived in Missouri, so it's quite a bit of a span. And throughout the months, it got worse. And I honestly felt like my life was forever going to be miserable because for the first few, like, weeks, months of her of her life, she was, like, it was, like, manageable. It wasn't, like, 
so terrible but as she got older um it was worse like she just constantly like she got into like the habit of wanting to breastfeed whenever she was um like a newborn a few weeks a few months I could give her a, um, a bottle and she could take it but once she started getting older she just was really really stuck to the habit of breastfeeding like it was like that's all she wanted she didn't want bre she didn't want bottle feeding she didn't want anything so um it was just it got I got more like frustrated at that and so I ended up moving back um with my mom whenever she was five months old and um and I remember coming here I felt a little bit of relief because I'm like well um, I'll have like with whenever it's with your family or at least with my family, I felt a little bit more of a, a little bit more of a relief of letting her cry a little bit more. I didn't feel so like stressed and like having like these eyes on me all the time um, because whenever it's somebody else's family, you want to impress them. And so I was just really like I said, I was just at an all-time low. I don't know what was going on with my mental health, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't okay. Um, and I came home. And I remember whenever I came home, my flight was terrible she literally cried through the whole thing she would not be quiet i remember i i, I packed bottles because i'm like well i'm gonna breast or i'm not gonna breastfeed her. i'm just gonna bottle feed her i packed a passy and nothing nothing she wanted nothing to do with it she cried through the whole time in the airport because you know she was comfort feeding so once we got into the hot into the airplane she cried we like i tried getting her earplugs because i thought that might be the problem nope well, I like sat and cried for a little bit and I remember the, this man on my flight, on my first flight, he helped me with her. Like she would like spit her pacifier out and scream and scream and they were so nice and it was like a first, um, first class flight and everyone in there was so nice to me. Like I, um, I remember taking her into the restroom and feeding her there because I was a little embarrassed of feeding her out, you know, out of the, like out in public, especially because there was like two men or a man sitting by me and like, you know, I don't know, I just felt really awkward. So I finally got over that and I just, I just fed her. Like I just, I just fed her on the plane because she didn't want anything. She would not go to sleep. It was the worst. Okay. And then after that, um, we, uh, we got here and I told my family, like, I, I remember I would call them and be like, like, she's so fussy, like, I can't do this. And then I came and she was really fussy, like, my family couldn't believe how fussy, fu fussy she was. Um, but it was a lot more relieving because they actually, like, would help me. Um, and my mom would get up at night, she would come, like, you know, rock Aaliyah. Um, and then it got even worse from there because once we moved here, Aaliyah did not want anybody but her mom. Aaliyah and Anthony. So I'm gonna try to take her. She would she would scream and cry with my mom. My sister would take her. She would scream and cry with my, my sister. Anybody was she would scream and cry. They were just so attached to me, and I think it was because the moving part just really affected them. Like they just they don't like to move, and um, I totally understand them. So they were always with me. Like whenever we'd go to church, going to church was so stressful with with them. Um, we'd go to church and they would always have to be by me, like both of them. And um, they couldn't go to a nursery. Um, and so it was just constant crying and doing little things like shopping and going out with my family was just really, really stressful at this point because Aaliyah didn't want to go with anybody. People would try to help me. Like, it's like the people there were like, the, there was people there to help me, but she didn't want anybody. And so she did this till about um, a few months ago, um, she stopped being so clingy but that was because like I love to protect my kids like that's one thing that I might have made a mistake with I was very protective of my kids I leaving them with people and hearing them cry I couldn't do like I would constantly like have to take them back because I, I just can't hear my kids cry with somebody else and so I would like take them back I wouldn't let anybody take them because I knew like how much they didn't like it and so especially Leah and so I would always have them like if if I had to do something, I'd rather cancel it and not do it. And so, um, what's it called? So she, like, throughout this whole time, she's still really, really breastfeeding. Like, she would not eat any f solid food very much. Um, and it was just horrible. Like, my breastfeeding was, like, the worst nightmare for me. With Anthony, it was great. Like, it hurt a little bit in the beginning, but it got, you know, I got over it, and it was awesome. It was great to breastfeed him, but with Leah, it was a nightmare because she constantly wanted to feed. She would not eat anything. Um, she only wanted to nurse. And so, after this, I finally decided to stop feeding into 
her. And so I would I would leave them. And then AJ's mom and um, stepdad came back. They moved back. Um, and then I had some friends who offered to, to watch her. And I had some church people who offered to help her. And I said, okay. I'm gonna do this. My family was here to all, like to help, and um, I was like, I'm gonna do this. Like one thing that I did, and I definitely messed up on, was I spoiled them too much, and so I started leaving them first with my mom and my sister. And I remember I left. I would leave her for a few hours. Even Anthony, I would leave him and her for a few hours at my house um, because I would go hang out with friends or I would go like to a conference or something like that, and I would come back and they were like. Like, it was horrible. And, like, my mom, like, her face was kind of like, like, oops, like. But there was honestly nothing that she could do to help them. But they just had to cry out and they had to deal with not being with their mom for a little bit. So it started off with, like, an hour. Then it, started, then it went off to, like, a few hours. But I remember it was a struggle. But I had to do it. And the people there were there to help me. So I just decided to do it. And then it started becoming, you know, half a day. And then, um... And then as that, as I was letting them grow up, because I feel like I was shielding them so much, but I finally started to let them grow up. And I, you know, I, Anthony was really bad too. He would, he would, he was really clingy to me. And um, it got to a point where I stopped feeding into that. And I would like, no, you guys, like, mommy has to do her own things. Like, mommy loves you guys and everything, but I need my free time. I need to be able to breathe. You need to stop breastfeeding. So you need to stop being so clingy. And so I just kind of put my foot down in that perspective, and I started doing. Doing my own things it wasn't like I was going out to party it wasn't like I was doing anything bad it wasn't like I was you know neglecting my kids giving them away it was just that I they needed to learn that mommy had things to do and so um, now looking on it those were the hardest few months of my life like um, for me um, because I felt like everyone else was taking it except me and so just mentally it was hard as well but it was definitely harder um, and the hardest whenever they were just so out of control like one would breastfeed all the time the other one would cry all the time and then it was just kind of like clashing together plus I had to discipline Anthony and um, I had to put my foot down with him as well I had to discipline him to the point where he knew that he could not cuss at people he could not hit people he could not spit at people he could not bite people he cannot be rude, rude to people and now I have this four-year-old boy who honestly he is such a wonderful person and he listens to me so well like so many people tell me like you've done such a good job like I go out shop and he listens so well like do we have our bad days of course we have our bad days because we're human beings but my friend texted me today and she was like Leslie I just want you to know like how amazing you are at disciplining your kids and you know like she like wrote me this message and it was so emotional and that's why I'm crying here because I'm like like I have to fight to get here like to this point and there's people out there who sometimes want to drag me down and they make me feel like I did nothing, but I've done so much for my kids. And I want to tell you today that if you fought for your kids, if you're there, if you truly love them, maybe you're like too overprotective, maybe you're too, you spoil them too much, you know, try a little change and don't be as scared of it. Um, if there's people there to help you, I know how hard it is because sometimes we don't have people, but find people. Um, and make friends with actually like a good group of people go to church um a whole bunch of my church family helped me you know talk to your family there's people that are willing to help you like i am that person willing to help mothers um who have trouble with that like i have friends who have babies now and um i'm like hey dude like give me your baby like i know how to deal with the screaming crying baby because of what i went through with my daughter like i know like if they cry they cry and that's okay i know like i take other um kids or I, I take other people's kids and i'm like don't worry about it and they look at me like oh my gosh like this girl's actually helping me and you know how many people have told me like i, I helped them because they dropped the kids off at the church nursery or they dropped the kids off at my house and the kids scream and cry and i just talk to them and i and i'll like play with them and i just even though they cry um i'm not gonna go send them back to their parents because their parents want to hear the message their parents need to work and so i'm gonna do whatever i can even though the kids have to cry and scream and throw a fit that they're gonna get used to it after a while and so I know that I'm putting um, and investing time in that kids life to make it better so um, it's just helped me and so just grow just know that it does get better after a while like there was highs there was lows there was lots of really deep deep lows in my life um, throughout that first year of Leah's a year and a half of Leah's life where I just I was just didn't want help I wasn't accepting it and um, 
I finally accepted it. I, you know, that my mom was telling me, leave the kids here with me. I'd be like, no, mom, like, I don't want them to cry for you. Like, no. And um, I'm like, no, I'm like, I, you know, I'd be so scared. Like, it was just like, I don't know, like, I, I was just like, so, I think I was just so stressed with life. I felt like nothing was going to make it better. Just know that it does get better after a while. You just have to be really, really patient. You have to allow others to help you. And I know, I noticed one thing in teenage moms nowadays, it's like, they have to do it all themselves like they write statuses about people trying to discipline their kids and they write statuses about like if you're trying to teach my kid blah 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 and in reality we need as much help as we can get you guys we can't do this on our own we cannot do this on our own is it possible that you can do it on your own yes is it possible that you might be a little too miserable after that yes so i i tell people like if somebody's offering you a good hand like you know that person you know that they're great people you know that you know they raised you good that they raise their kids good that you know whatever that they're not child molesters or you know things like that um get the help that you need there's people out there willing to do it so get it and we cannot do this ourselves i remember i was that teen mom who thought i could do it all on my own um and that's why i was so like overprotective of my kids not overprotective i was just really like prideful of my kids and so i wouldn't let anybody help me and of course like give them a chance if they teach your kids bad things if they teach your kids things that you don't like if they're not good people if you find out things about them then definitely like withdraw your kids from their relationship from what you know whatever it is just i'm really take them out and be like yo you can't see my kids anymore this is why just be straight up front with them and i totally understand but if you're trying to do whatever possible in your life i've been actually doing this now and um I've been leaving them with my mom. I go out. Now that AJ's here, AJ helps me out a ton with the kids. Um, and so I just feel like I can breathe now. Like, there's times where I go through the store, um, and I'm just like, wow, like, this is great. Like, this is awesome. And I sometimes want to cry. And, and, um, and it was just kind of like, today I was at the store, and I was just like, today was just kind of like an emotional day all in all. I, I was at the store today, and I just like, I got to get a deep breath. I was like, <sighs> It's okay, like, Leah is not screaming anymore in the cart. Um, Anthony is not cussing me out in the store and trying to kick me and throwing a tantrum. Like, life's good right now, and I'm always so thankful for that right now because, and then sometimes you have to suffer because um, you don't see things till you go through something hard, and I believe that what I went through was really tough with my kids, but it got better. So, you are a great mother. I, I remember feeling like a terrible mom because I would see my child cry and I didn't know how to make her stop. I would give her a bottle, I'd give her boob, I'd give her, um, I'd change her diaper, I'd do everything on the list and she would still be screaming and crying. Um, and it was just terrible. I felt like a terrible person. I felt like a terrible mom. Um, but then they grow up and you have to discipline them, you have to teach them, you have to love them, you have to, you know, do all those parent duties and you also have to let others help you because it just makes life a little bit easier and, um, yeah, so thank you guys so much for watching. That's all I had for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed that story time. And um, if you like these kind of videos, make sure to give me a thumbs up. If you guys have any video recommend recommendations, leave them down below. And I will talk to you guys later. Don't forget to subscribe. And don't forget to click the little bell at the um, um, on the side of the subscribe button. Um, there's also a circle at the end of our videos. Um, I think you can click on that and subscribe. Um, and the little bell just notifies you when... Um, I upload a video and you guys will get notified if you don't click that little bell then you won't get notified um, Thank you for subscribing if you did subscribe. We love you guys. We love all of our subscribers Thank you guys for your support. Thank you for just being here and watching um, And we will talk to you guys later. Bye guys